Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today is going to be all about how I planted my lasagna bed home garden. And I'm going to take you through the entire process from putting the soil box or the transplants uh, into the ground. I'm going to show you thinning seedlings. I'm going to show you the direct sowing and then the different stages of growth. So after they've come up, how do you thin the thin the direct sown seedlings? And then I'll show you the final version of the garden once it's grown up big and, and I was harvesting and all that. So you get to see all the stages and how it all works together. So this video was filmed two years ago, back before I really had hardly any tools. I didn't have a direct seeder. So I did this the old fashioned way, just everything totally by hand with no tools so it'll be a really great video for home gardeners and uh, people starting out or people who just want more planting tips in in general how to have the healthiest plants possible so i've got my uh, first uh, transplants right here i'm chunking this these garden beds into big blocks and each block will be where a certain family of plants will be this side of the bed is the north side because it's winter it's very important that i start my plantings on the north side, especially the plants that are gonna get very large. So that the larger plants on this back side don't shade out anything behind it. If I put my you know, broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower up front and I have lettuce here, they're gonna completely shade out all that lettuce. So that's something to really keep in mind. So this first row is gonna be Brussels sprouts, the next row is gonna be cabbage and then cauliflower. So I'll be doing some interplanting um, in this area where I'm doing my cabbage, broccoli, all of those things because they're going to take a long time before they're really developing their heads and they've really leafed and vegged out a lot. Um, I'll be able to get like a quick round of lettuce. I'm planting my Brussels sprouts right here. And I'm just going to pull back my straw, dig out a little bit of a hole. Press the soil block down into the ground firmly, and then I'm since I don't have my drip irrigation set up, I'm just gonna kind of make a little small basin here, kind of like how you would for a tree. Make sure it's nice and in there. Now you can see I'm interplanting some lettuce. I'm just throwing in a lettuce in between. I'll be able to harvest this lettuce in like six weeks, and I'll get it out of here in time before these Brussels sprouts get really big. Uh, I'm prepping this side of the bed for uh, all direct sowing stuff, so carrots, beets, uh, turnips, spinach, what else am I going to do? I think that's about it. I wish I had a little more space, but I just don't. All of these are spaced about, you know, 8 to 10 inches. I'm packing them pretty tight. You know, I could do this a bit more spacing, but I'm just going to try and pack them in as tight as possible. Um, we'll see what kind of yields we get. So all these other ones are for spinach, and uh, I'll do the spinach closer down here. It's going to receive a little bit less light, and they'll be able to handle that better. Um, then I'll be doing turnips, beets, and carrots over here. Here's the seeds I'll be planting. Uh, Bloomsdale spinach, an excellent variety. Big turnip, seven top. Uh, Detroit red, it's a great beet. Bull's blood is another excellent variety of beets. Um, Scarlet Nantes is a classic. And then I have these um, Korean radishes. I love, and my wife loves, and you can make awesome kimchi out of them. Or they're great raw, so I can't wait to try these out. All right, here we go. We're gonna start with my carrot rows here, and I'm gonna plant them right next to my celery. Uh, celery and carrots are in the same family. I wanna keep my families together. This is how you can direct sow your seeds. So this is a super simple way to do it. There's a really awesome machine with a wheel and it drops the seeds for you. I don't have one of those yet, but this works just as well. So you're just gonna sprinkle seeds in the furrow that you created. Okay. I'm just sprinkling them in. So if they're cheap seeds, you know, you can seed them pretty heavy. And what's gonna happen is lots of them are gonna sprout and you're gonna come back later and thin them out. So when we thin them out, we're gonna clip them back to like one carat every inch. 
and this distance probably like the tightest you'd want to go because you want to give them enough distance because you want to imagine they're going to puff out on each side a bunch they might go kind of different directions in the soil so you want to have enough space so they're not pushing into each other you want if you want big plump juicy untwisted carrots then you gotta give them enough space uh, horizontally and vertically you know this is a brand new bed it is deep but um, since it's a first year bed the carrots will do decently but I don't expect them to be incredible so I'm just gonna continue just sprinkling out my lines here okay next I'll be doing my uh, beets and you'll notice if you've ever planted chard or seen the seeds they're very similar plants in the same family have similar seeds. For beets, I'm not gonna plant them as thick. These are gonna be spaced out um, every like three or four inches. And inside of each one of these, the seed cluster itself is uh, multiple seeds. So when you plant it, there are actually two sprouts or three could come out of one seed. And the same thing happens when you're planting chard as well. So you can see the difference um, in how heavily I um, seeded carrots versus my beets. Alright, next I have the Korean small radish. I'm not sure if these seeds are coated or if that's the actual color of the seed. But I'm going to do two rows of these. And about this, uh, similar spacing to beets. They can be a little bit thicker though because these can be about two inches apart um, at full size and beets are more like four inches apart. And next is the turnips. So these uh, will seed pretty heavy and thin back. If you seed it too heavy, it's not a big deal because you can always thin it out. If you plant too thinly, you're screwed and you won't get the maximum yield. So I, I say it's better to, to throw out a few more seeds. If they're expensive seeds, then be a little bit more prudent, but if they're cheap, just run of the mill seeds and it's direct so Plant it, you know, fairly heavy. At last and absolutely not least, the spinach. We're gonna do three rows of these babies. Spinach is an awesome plant because you can harvest it throughout the season. You don't have to pull up the whole plant. You can just take a few leaves, so it's pretty awesome. Spinach does not need to be seeded super heavy. Uh, I would say spinach is a plant that is more difficult to sprout. It's a little more finicky. I had enough spinach to make it happen. I wish I could have done it a little bit heavier, um, but this will do. So this is the spinach. This is a row of turnips. It's very difficult to see. They look like kale seeds or broccoli seeds. Here's my radishes. The beets. And finally, carrots. The final thing I need to do, of course, is cover these seeds. The larger seeds can handle some more soil. Most of these, the turnips, the carrots, the smaller seeds, I don't want to cover them more than like a half an inch. Just going to delicately fold over the furrows that I created. After I fold them over, I'm going to come back with my hand and press firmly but lightly, pack them down. So now when I'm creating these furrows originally, I want to create a good depth. So. Next to my carrots, I only pushed a, you know the soil out a little bit. I only created about a you know a half to a quarter inch furrow. Um, on the things like my beets, you might be able to tell I created a deeper furrow, and then the the soil is higher on the outside. So when I fold this over, uh, I'll get a lot better coverage of those seeds, and they need the coverage. I'm gonna continue down the line and cover my furrows. Seeds need to be compact in there. They can't have a bunch of loose soil and air around them, or they will not germinate. So now I'm gonna soak these babies in, and then throw my straw back on top, keep the moisture in there, and we'll wait a week or two and see what comes up. First thing I'm going to do is replace any bad seedlings that aren't doing well. Um, as you can see, you know, that lettuce is doing great. This lettuce is doing great. This uh, Brussels sprout is doing great. This one, maybe not so much. That broccoli, not so much. Any one of them that doesn't look like they're, they're transplanting well, um, I'm going to replace them with my new set of transplants here. And I just wanted to have one little side note on 
soil blocks and the soil that you use for potting or for just starting your seeds in if you just have trays. So these seedlings I started with my new compost pile that I bought from uh, Eb, a uh, guy who makes soil up in Ramona. It was seven yards of horse and rabbit compost blended with two yards of perlite. So nine yards total of some of the best soil you can get in San Diego. And these seedlings blew up. They are beautiful as you can see. Now I wish I could show you my old tray. I started the, these other trays here. I've used almost all the, the seedlings, but that I created with um, Kellogg's soil. Not the Patio Plus, but I used the garden bed um, and potting soil. It's um, Armory Listed Organic. You know, it's decent soil, but to me it's just it just goes to show you your soil is everything. So you want to be starting your seeds in the best soil possible, wherever that is in your area. Someone around you is making some beautiful black gold and you just need to find them. Um, you know, Home Depot is a last resort, honestly. You know, the Kellogg soil is yeah, its the best stuff you can get at Home Depot, but it's like the quality is, is, is really nowhere near what a local person could create for you. You'll also notice I've got a bunch of doubles here. So I need to come and thin these out and trim them back um, to just one plant. These are all at the size now where they're ready to be thinned and they can rely on themselves. Um, I like to leave a couple doubles just because um, sometimes a rabbit can come in and eat one or sometimes one uh, plant just develops better, better roots and, and larger than other ones. So when you're trying to determine which um, seedling you should cut out, there's a few different factors you should look for. So one of them is the leader leaf, the next biggest one. So this, these are the leaders, the next leaves that they'll send up. So you want to look at the size and the health of those leaves. Then you're going to look at the actual stem down here, the stalk that's going to be created. Look at the thickness of it all the way through down to the ground. See if it's stretched out at all. Sometimes the seedling, if it's not planted deep enough, on a broccoli or cruciferous like this, the stem will get stretched and kind of weak. So you want to watch out for that. Look at the overall greenness of the, the plant. If there's any yellowing, that would show weakness. Um, when I look at these two stalks, I can see that this one's slightly um, thicker. This one has a little bit bigger um, leader leaf, but I think because this the stronger stalk here and it also has some larger sun collecting leaves, that's the one I should choose. So I'll keep this one and cut out the other. When you're deciding amongst uh, many sprouts which ones to cut, sometimes it's easier, like if you can't make the decision right away, is you just cut out the ones that are way too small. They're just obviously not good enough. And then the, the best one will kind of reveal itself, which it just did. To choose which one to cut out, this one got a little stretch and so it's going to be weak. Um, any of these stocky cruciferous need to have a strong stalk. And then I'm also looking at the first true leaf of the plant, and this is the largest one. And it's got a strong little stalk here, so I'm going to cut these two out and leave that one. So the carrots are not yet ready to thin, they're still a little too small. I'm going to let them grow for another week so I can really visibly see their stems. The beets as well. I'm going to let them go one more week, but the radishes and these turnips are ready. I'm going to look up the spacing because these are Korean radishes, so they're a little bit larger. And the turnips I've never grown before, so I'm not really sure how big the bulb's going to get. So I'm just going to go look it up online about what you need to thin them to. Uh, it'll, probably, you know, it'll be you know, two to four inches, something like that. So I'll thin those back so they can really start um, growing big. Here's where I did my spinach and they're not growing very well. Uh, they're, the spinach is notoriously hard to sprout and this is not the best area. It doesn't get sun all day. It needs um, a little bit more warmth to sprout these and the seeds I'm using are a couple years old. So I think I'm just going to pull the plug on it. I'll let the spinach that did sprout, I'm going to let it go. But I'll probably end up putting some more lettuce here. And since this is a lower sun area, the lettuce will also do 
better here than some of the other things I could put here. So here's my garden on March 10th. I still have endive, mustard greens, pulling up the turnips right now. Lots of really nice beets. I've got carrots that are getting close, celery that's getting close, chard, some onions, bulb onion. I have red Russian kale, collard greens, um, zucchini and yellow crookneck squash is starting. These Brussels sprouts, which I need to take out, uh, which unfortunately, with my kind of my failure this winter, I, they didn't really turn into very good Brussels sprouts. And what else do I have here? On the side here, some pink rock rose that's starting to bloom, barrage, yarrow, dill that's going to seed, basil, comfrey starting to take off, more celery, a, a tomato plant that I've been growing for the last couple months through winter, and then my starts. Over here there's shallots, and then four other types of garlic, and some curly kale. Okay, so I'm out here today. Just wanted to show off the uh, garden a little bit, see what's going on. Um, I've moved all my potted plants from this area to here because now I'm getting sunlight. Um, it's about 2 p.m. So I finally have sunlight on this side of my beds. Um, I clipped back my basil and, it's and gave it some compost. It's coming in really nicely now. Um, I've added a little bit of compost that I made um, to all these pots as well. Um, I've all got my got my different tomatoes and peppers going. I'm doing the marzanos, I'm doing beefsteak, I'm doing cherries, I'm doing um, a few others as well. Uh, some comfrey, some yarrow, some rosemary, some chamomile that's full of bloom. I've been making tea with it and it's really good. Uh, I let the cilantro that I was growing in winter go to seed here and that's bringing in lots of beneficials and um, I want to collect the seeds. Back here I've got some sage and geranium. And then I recently just purchased uh, some dragon fruit and a couple, these are blackberries, and these are small concord grapes. I've sprouted some beans, some of my spinach is still going. These are provider bush beans. I've got a few more beets left. Lots of carrots I need to start harvesting soon. Some celery left, chard. Letting all of my um, green onion go to seed so I can collect it. And I pulled out all the kale today, fed it to the chickens. A tiny bit of collard greens left. It hasn't bolted, but all of my kale has both bolted now on April 7th. Uh, my squash is coming in really good. You got yellow crookneck and some black beauty zucchini. So I should have some fruit from that, you know, maybe next week. And then I interplanted some lettuce. I wish I would have planted the lettuce like a week before I planted the squash. Um, but the timing of it, I needed to get all this stuff in the ground. So I just, you know, some of it's doing decently. I'll get a little bit of lettuce harvest out of it. Why not? Um, here I've got bunching onions. And here is some um, spinach that's coming up. And it seeded okay. I had a skunk come in and totally mess up this area, so the sprouting percentage wasn't that good. Um, here I've got some um, peas. Uh, they are snap peas. And then I've got all my garlic scallions and stuff going. A little bit of chard and kale back there. Um, I just created this new little tiny bed here, just doing lettuce. This area gets a little bit less sun, so um, uh, that'll be good for my lettuce to help it to keep it from not bolting. Up here I'm sprouting some watermelon and uh, more summer stuff. I'm trying to do a little more herb cilantro, try and get a little bit of yield before it gets too hot. Some more charred kale, collard greens, green onions, chives. Sprouting more tomatoes and peppers down here. Uh, my tomatoes doing awesome. I love this thing. It's almost to the top of the roof now. It's been growing since winter. 